Your relative VO2 max is the maximal amount of oxygen that your muscles are able to use to produce movement. It's probably the best measurement of your cardiorespiratory fitness. Although you only can achieve your highest lifetime peak VO2 max from age 20 to age 30, you can always increase your VO2 max by 15 to 20 percent with regular high intensity aerobic exercise like running or cycling. So how does your body adapt to endurance training to increase your VO2 max? Hi, I'm Dr. Maria Conley. I'm going to talk about the adaptations that your body makes to deliver more oxygen to your working muscle and how your muscle is able to extract more oxygen from the blood to produce energy. So how does oxygen get to your muscle in the first place? When you breathe in oxygen from the atmosphere, it is eventually deposited in into tiny air sacs in the lungs called alveoli. Here, it moves into the blood and is snatched up by hemoglobin molecules and red blood cells. Oxygenated blood travels from the lungs to the left ventricle of the heart which then plumps, pumps that blood with oxygen to the rest of the body via the arteries. Once oxygen reaches the skeletal muscle, it can pass from a capillary, which is the tiniest artery in your body, into an individual muscle cell. Once inside the muscle cell, oxygen travels to the mitochondria where it is used to produce energy for movement. Your maximal oxygen consumption during exercise, or VO2 max, is the product of your cardiac output, which is equal to stroke volume times heart rate, multiplied by your arterial venous oxygen difference. So, theoretically, your VO2 max may be limited by either oxygen delivery to the muscle or by your muscle's ability to use oxygen. For most people, the limiting factor is the inevitable age-related decline in maximal heart rate that occurs in all humans. A heart that pumps blood more slowly is less able to supply oxygen to the rest of the body. Although you cannot improve your maximal heart rate with exercise, you can improve your stroke volume. This is the other component of your cardiac output. In fact, this is the main way that your body is able to increase your VO2 max with endurance training. Your body first adapts within the first 24 hours of exercise by increasing your plasma volume. Within two weeks, your red blood cell volume increases. Recall that oxygen is carried to muscle via the red blood cells. So this is why blood doping works. Athletes are able to improve their performance and blood oxygen carrying capacity by either re-injecting their own blood right before a race or by using hormones such as erythropoietin or EPO to boost hemoglobin production. If you have more blood being pumped to muscle, you also have more blood that's returning to the heart. So you have increased venous return. This increases your stroke volume, which is the amount of blood pumped out of the heart with each heartbeat. Over months, your left ventricle of the heart compensates by growing larger, more compliant and stretchy, and more muscular. A process called eccentric hypertrophy. These changes allow your heart to become a better muscular pump. Within weeks of starting endurance training, your body increases blood supply at the muscle level by stimulating new growth of capillaries. Remember, these are the smallest blood vessels, the arteries carrying blood or blood and oxygen. The rate of capillary growth is the highest in the first few weeks of training and then levels off after a month. Endurance athletes typically have at least twice as many capillaries supplying each muscle fiber as a sedentary person does. 
Higher capillary density slows the transit time of blood and allows for more complete extraction of all that oxygen in the blood by working muscle. Higher blood flow also leads to remodeling of the arteries. The arterial lumen, or the, the space inside the artery, gets bigger to accommodate more oxygenated blood, and the wall of the artery actually thins out. This is exactly opposite to the changes that typically occur in chronic hypertension. And in hypertension, the lumen actually gets smaller and the wall of the artery gets thicker. Your muscle also adapts to endurance training by increasing the number and size of their power stations or mitochondria. In this way, working muscle is able to use the higher amount of oxygen that it is receiving. Although the increase in mitochondria has very little effect on your VO2 max, it does increase the amount of fat that your muscle burns for energy. In this way, endurance trained muscle is more likely to spare glycogen and produce less lactic acid as a byproduct. This is good because less lactic acid in the muscle means less muscle fatigue. Exercise is a good stress for the body. The thousands of muscle contractions that occur during 30 minutes of running disrupt your body's balance and trigger it to adapt. Your body does this by increasing your plasma volume, remember this is the blood without the red blood cells, and also by increasing red blood cell volume, thereby increasing your stroke volume. With this mechanism, you're able to increase your VO2 max by 15 to 20% after several weeks of endurance training. Thank you for listening. I hope that this was helpful for you.